staring up at an incredible night sky with thousands of stars shining overhead. You can't help but want to capture it, either to share it with others, remember its beauty, or even to reveal something that you can't quite see with your puny little eyeball alone, like a comet or a nebula. Now I'm more used to taking images of the night sky with giant professional telescopes at observatories all around the world for my research, but over the years I've slowly picked up how to get the best results with just your phone and a camera as well. And I figured the best time to share all my tips and tricks for doing this is when we're under some of the darkest night skies in the world, so far away from light pollution, here in the Maldives at Saneva Fushi, where I've been invited to tour guests around the wonders of the night sky. So most people come here for the sun, the sea and the sand, and while yes, in another the life I might have become a marine biologist and not an astrophysicist. Yeah, most of my day is now just spent waiting around for the sun to set already. <sighs> because it's the night skies here that hold the biggest draw. The Maldives is almost on the equator, so you get the best of both the northern and the southern skies. Which means we've got a lot of options when it comes to astrophotography here. Let's start with tips and tricks for your phone. Now we're an iPhone family here, so that's all I'm gonna be able to demonstrate with, but the tips I'm gonna share are gonna be relevant for any Android or Google users as well. It'll just be the mechanics that are slightly different in terms of the app on your phone. So if you go to your phone and open the camera app at night or in the dark, you'll see this little icon come up in the corner that looks a little bit like a moon. If you tap that icon, you'll see a scroll bar that comes up at the bottom to change the exposure time. So how many seconds you want the camera to take in light for. You know, a normal photo you take is just a quick of the shutter and it's not enough time to let in enough light to actually be able to see the stars. So this is why we have these long exposure shots. Now, if you have your phone and you're trying to hold it to take a long exposure shot of the sky, your stars are clearly gonna end up all over the place. You're gonna get a blurry picture that nobody's gonna want to see. Plus the iPhone actually limits you to only a 10 second exposure when you're holding it. So tip number one is to use a tripod if you have one, or if you don't, just prop your phone up against something that's still, like a water bottle or a mug or whatever you have to hand, really. And when you do that, you'll notice that you'll actually be able to swipe that exposure time amount to a much longer 30 second exposure time, or at least somewhere between 10 and 30 seconds. Again, that's gonna let in a lot more light and you're gonna see more stars. Tip number two is to use a remote or a delay timer on your image. So just by tapping the take photo button, either on the bottom or on the side there, you are gonna nudge your phone slightly doing that. And that's gonna shift those stars around and make them blurry again. So if you have a remote, some tripods come with them when you buy one, use that, that's great or you can put like a three second delay timer on the image. You know, the kind that you like put on when you're taking a big group photo of people and everybody runs in as the countdown ticks down. Do that and you'll minimize that blurriness on the stars. Tip number three is known as the 500 rule in astrophotography. So although your phone can do a 30 second exposure, you might not always want to. You wanna pitch it somewhere between 10 seconds and 30 seconds as a balance between letting in enough light to actually capture the stars, but then not leaving it for so long that the earth has rotated so much under them that what you end up getting is star trails on your image rather than a nice bright Point. You know, when we look up at the sky, we think of it as the stars moving because we can capture these star trails and, and observe them moving overnight. But in reality, it's the Earth moving under the stars. So how do we fix that in our images? It's with the 500 rule. So the 500 rule essentially tells you roughly the maximum exposure you can do with your phone or with your camera without getting star trails. You work it out as 500 divided by what's known as the focal length of your lens. You can search online to find out what focal length your model of phone has, or if you have an iPhone, you can take an image and then swipe up on it and see the details and see the focal length of the lens that took that image. So the wide lens on this iPhone 13 Pro has a focal length of 26 millimeters, which means the maximum exposure time we can roughly do with it is 500 divided by 26, which equals 19 seconds. 
or the ultra wide camera that it also has is only 13 millimeter focal length which means the maximum exposure time is 500 divided by 13 which is about 38 seconds and the reason this works is because of the the field of view you get with each of these different lenses so a wider lens you see more of the sky at once each individual star takes up less pixels on your image and so therefore less pixels as it moves across the sky or as earth rotates underneath it essentially the wider the lens you have the longer exposure you can get away with and that's all there is to it really you know hold it steady put it on a timer so you don't knock it when you start it going don't go for too long of an exposure and just see what you get you know have a go and remember practice makes perfect now for funsies we also wanted to test the different iphone models against each other to see how they each fared so i just got this iphone 13 pro Sam has an iPhone 12 mini and my old phone is an iPhone 11. They each have a 26 millimeter lens. So we tested them all with a 30 second exposure shot taken in the exact same spot overlooking the observatory dome, the telescope here at Sunebafushi. And this is how they all fed. So here's the iPhone 11 image. It's picked out the brightest stars, but not much else. Here's the iPhone 12 image, which you'll notice is a lot brighter. That's because the 12 is cleverer than the 11 and it automatically ups the sensitivity to light. It's called the ISO. So it's actually picked out more stars. It's just the sky is also brighter too. That's even more obvious with the iPhone 13 image. You know, you've really got the brighter sky and a lot more stars in this case. You can also really clearly see the star trails in this one as well because we went with the 30 second exposure rather than a 20 second exposure to test these just to let in the most amount of light. Side by side, you can see the differences even more clearly and especially how the iPhone 13 does a much better job than the others. You can also do just a little bit of an adjustment with an app like Lightroom to help you drop the brightness of the sky and up the brightness of the stars, just making them really pop. That's another sort of bonus tip for you. Always edit your photos. Like check out this one I got with my iPhone 13 at around about 6 a.m. in the morning when the Milky Way had finally risen here in the Maldives. I didn't think that my phone had originally picked it out at first because of how bright the nearby toenail moon was as well. But a little bit of editing and lo and behold, it popped out. All right, enough about phones. Let's talk about cameras now as well. Now the tips stay pretty much exactly the same. Chuck it on a tripod, use a remote if you've got one, or if not, one of the self timer releases. And obviously check the 500 rule with the focal length of your lens because you're really gonna notice those star trails on a really big sort of like megapixel array detector of these cameras. Also, you're gonna get best results if you put this thing on manual mode so that you're in control of all the settings. You're gonna want quite a wide aperture in order to let in as much light as possible. So the lowest F ratio you can get with your lens. And then you just wanna balance out the sensitivity with whatever aperture size and exposure time that you're gonna do with your lens. A lot of this is trial and error. I found, you know, if it's too sensitive, knock it down. I usually start high and come down from there. The last challenge that I find with cameras that phones obviously do automatically is the focusing. So you're gonna wanna set your camera to focus to infinity because you're looking at things that are incredibly far away. And then what I tend to do is I use the sort of the, the viewfinder screen to zoom in to one of the brightest stars that I can see in the field. And then I'll make minor adjustments either just by pressing the autofocus or just turning the focus um, onto manual mode and adjusting it myself as well. Again, a lot of this is trial and error. You'll notice if your stars are out of focus in your shots. And if that's why it looks weird, try again with the focusing until you get it right. So I'll take a few test shots and once I'm happy with like the framing and what I've actually got in the shot and the sensitivity and the exposure time and I'm not getting star trails, et cetera, et cetera, I'll then actually set a time-lapse going. Now, some cameras these days actually have time-lapse modes, but most cameras, what you'll need to use is the interval timer function on your camera, which lets you take, you know, say 200 photos, like one every, you know, five, 10 seconds or whatever it might be of whatever settings that you've set on your camera. I can't stress enough how much astrophotography is it's really just about practice at the end of the day. It's about having fun, trying different things out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. We've had a lot of fun this trip doing something we've never tried before, which is light painting a shot. So taking a bright light like on your phone, like your torch light on your phone and just flashing it for the briefest of moments, like half a second or a second in during like your 15, 30 second uh, exposure shot, whatever it is. And then you can light up things in the foreground like trees or even like people in the foreground as well. So you can get you and the stars all framed in one shot, which is amazing to do. It's a little bit tricky. It does take a lot of practice, but you get there at the end. <laughs>
So have a go. Like the worst that can happen is that you get a blurry image of the night sky and you have to try again and you lose a couple of hours just staring up at how beautiful the sky is. If you do manage it either as a complete novice or you've been doing this for a really long time, send some of your best shots my way over on social media and I will share some of my favorites. In the meantime, I'm gonna go enjoy everything that the Maldives has to offer, including its crystal clear night sky. And I just wanna say a big thank you to all of you again for being here and wanting to chat space with me because it's because of you that I get invited to places like this and get to enjoy such incredibly light pollution free crystal clear skies. Those who know me know that I plan my holidays around the night sky, right? Like, are we going somewhere with no light pollution? Yes, I am there. This idea of astronomy tourism, traveling to see something in the night sky that you can't see from home normally and just enjoying the wonders of it. So thank you all so much again. It really is a dream come true. And so until next time, everyone, happy stargazing. I've slowly picked up how to get the best results with both your phone. That's not my phone. That's the camera. <laughs> that's my phone. <laughs> oh, a week in paradise and my brain's fried. <laughs> Tip number three is something... What is that cawing of that owl? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, I'll be fine. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Use a remote or put it on a timer if you can. Make sure you... Uh, what? You need sunglasses. <laughs> you can see my reflection. <laughs> Just there like... <laughs> the camera's interval timer settings to... Oh, we're about to slam the door shut. One sec. <laughs> oh, I can't run and do it because I'm tethered to you. <laughs> I didn't think that through before running off, did I? <laughs>